Hello, I'm Sheriff Chad Bianco, and welcome to another episode of the RSO Roundup. I think we have a great show here today. This is going to be a little bit different than what we normally have, highlighting what we do within the department and how we interact with the public. Uh, this is going to be a little bit different. In this is this show is going to highlight how we interact and how we train our inmates mm -hmm. for once they get back out into public, we can mm -hmm. assimilate them back into public mm -hmm. and hopefully stop them from coming back in. So today on our show, we have Don Jones, who oversees Site B, mm -hmm. which is the Sheriff's Inmate Training and Education Bureau. That's right. I'll tell a little story about that later, but Don, welcome to the show. Thank and you. like we normally do on to start off with mm -hmm. it with our employees, we like highlighting our employees and, and what they're doing for the department and the public. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay. Well, I've worked uh, with Riverside County for around 30 years, worked with the Department of Public Social Services, and then I've been with the Sheriff's Department for almost 17 years of that. And now you oversee Site B. Correct. So Site yes. B is where it's a part of Larry Larry Smith Correctional Facility, and it's actually a separate part of the correctional facility. So funny story, Don and I were uh, together a couple of weeks ago, and uh, she was hosting a, a a forum for some community members. And as she's telling her story and talking about it, it finally dawned on me after 29 years in this department that Site B really did not mean Site B apart from Site A, mm. which I assumed was the jail. Site B stands for Sheriff's Inmate Training and Education Bureau. Correct. So that was a little, we're, we're never too old to learn. <laughs> so why don't, you, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about the, about the program and what okay. we do for inmates? Okay, so Site B is actually located in every single detention facility, but our main campus is on, at the Larry Smith Correctional Facility in Banning. So we do provide direct inmate services to all the inmates, the, the people, the individuals that are incarcerated at the adult detention facilities throughout Riverside County. That can include chaplain services or book carts, law libraries, the, all the volunteers that come into the jail that offer services, uh, with its religious services or AA, NA meetings, uh, groups that they want to do with the inmates, things of that sort, Site B overseas. We also um, provide education and vocational skills training and therapeutic programs to the inmates. And our goal is to re reduce recidivism, which is to lower the likelihood or the chance that they'll return to a criminal lifestyle or return to incarceration at any point. Right. And, you know, we've we've been doing this for a long time. And we actually have a, I mean, the program that you're overseeing and what you're mm -hmm. doing with inmates is a very robust program yes. that we've been running for quite mm -hmm. some time. Uh, the, the public may not be aware yeah. of the effort that we put in to try and stop inmates from coming back in to yeah. assimilate them back into society so they can either get a job or train them, you know, schooling, mm -hmm. their education, high school right. diploma, something exactly. like that. And it's, uh, you know, some of the detractors from the department uh, would just like people to believe that we just throw people into jail right. and leave them in a cell. And that's that's the furthest thing from that. You, mm -hmm. you put a lot of effort into mm -hmm. making sure we really do engage and take care of the inmates while they're here. Yes, we provide a lot of opportunities for them so they can get involved with adult basic education. They can take their GED or high set exam while they're in there or do preparation for that. They can actually even receive a high school diploma if they um, bring their credits up to be able to do that. So education-wise, that's really good. Therapeutically, we have a vet program that we offer special services to vets. We um, conducted the Residential Substance Abuse Treatment Program, another acronym, RSAT, mm -hmm. for over 20 years and had a high was degree very of success, success with, yes, that, was very with successful. that also and, and strong partnership with the courts, the Public Defender's Office and the DA's Office. Probation is also one of our, our partners with all of that. We also have um, an ABC's program, which is the audiobook children's stories. So almost everything connected with Site B is an acronym. Yes, um, it is. So it's almost as bad as radio code because we speak in acronyms quite a bit. Uh, the the reading program is nice. Yes, that's a that's a nice way for parents that are incarcerated to still be able to interact. 
Yes, so they're able to read a audio book, a uh, children's book. While incarcerated, we contact the care provider and, and coordinate all of the services with that. And then once the book is recorded by the parent, then we mail that out to the care provider. And then the child can hear the parent's voice reading them a story, you know, as often whenever they want to. And so that's one of the projects we do with family reunification. Yeah, that probably has a therapeutic effect on yes. the child as much as yes. it does the Very much parent so. that's, in, that's in jail. Yeah, yeah, yeah th that's good. Uh, so tell me a little bit about the the type of inmate. This is a, it's a voluntary program. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So uh, these services are simply offered. No one is required. Our largest functioning part of the Site B services at this point in time is, is focused on reentry, and that's getting back into the community and transitioning back. So we have correctional counselors as part of our staff, part of the Sheriff's Department, and we also partner with Behavior Health, and we contract Behavior Health Specialists who are part of our team, and we meet with inmates individually who are getting ready to be released from custody. We help them identify their risk and their needs and set up a transitional plan. So we connect them with outside community resources and government benefits and interagencies, whatever they're going to need to transition or have the highest likelihood of success on the outside. And then we also provide a tremendous amount of skills training, vocational training through Site B. So we have uh, construction technology where inmates can actually earn a cert certificate as in CCER. It's a national construction technology training that they're registered after they're certified and can get a job in construction anywhere in the United States. We also have that for a custodial program, uh, national certification program with that. We have welding, uh, cabinetry making. We are starting an engraving program. We have Gray Bar Print Shop, which the inmates learn all of the print equipment. They take graphic arts and um, computer information systems as well. We are starting, well, we have a landscape uh, technology where they learn drip systems and, and landscape design. We're trying to do everything we can to give them some yeah. type of tool yeah. to use when they get back out there to help them with a job rather than... And they get Crime. OSHA certified, too, so they can go out, and they have already have that training. And so that gives them an edge in the uh, competitive market to get a job because they have certifications and, and trainings. And, um, and, and and it's the things that you highlight, you're talking about construction trades and welding trades. Yes. Those are those are trades that are that are highly sought after. Yes. And in, in our environment, there are plenty of those jobs out there. So yes. if we can if we can train them, give them those skills, we're hoping that they get a job and regain a responsible livelihood right. And, right. And, and not come back. There's a sense of satisfaction with being able to see the fruits of your labor and being able to see that you contributed to something. So we, we really see that with the people that we work with. We just started a culinary arts program at I'm, one of our- I'm excited about that. The, yes, and uh, that's in partnership with the College of the Desert. We actually have chefs that are teaching um, and working with the participants to learn and they're getting their food handlers cards as well. And uh, in coming months, we're gonna be starting a barista program for uh, individuals to be trained because there are thousands of barista jobs out there that are good paying and get scholarships and healthcare yes, there are. and all kinds I of mean, good you, things. I mean, all you have to do is drive around and there's a there's a Starbucks on every corner and yes. a restaurant yes. filling up the in between the corners. So yeah. if we can if we can help them out, it's I, I think it's and I've been I've been through there. I've been you you showed us you took that tour yeah. that group that we took through, and it's really a fantastic facility. Mm -hmm. It's state of the art equipment that yes. we're training them on, and they're getting not only you know really good training, but yes. it's up to date. Yes. training on the equipment that they would that they would be using once they get out there. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, it's a it, it's it's a it's a good program that we have. Yes. Uh, it's and you've mentioned so far a lot of we we don't do this by ourselves. This Correct. is a this is an enormous collaborative yes. effort. Yes. between a whole bunch of different county agencies. Yes. We work with Economic Development Agency. We work with the Department of Public Social Services. 
with government benefits and signing uh, inmates up for Medi-Cal pre-release so it can be activated upon release. We work with um, child uh, services with uh, people who are in custody but have child support cases outside. So we work with that. We partnered with the DMV uh, as well as the uh, Department of Veteran Affairs work with probation and uh, RCOE, which is Riverside County Office of Education, and um, some of the behavior health, some of our other partners that are involved. It, it's a huge effort. Yes. I mean, we do, I like, you know, especially on this program, I highlight all of the, the ways we, we deploy our personnel to arrest people that are doing crimes yeah. and, and bring them into custody and hold them accountable. But uh, it's nice to show that when that happens, then we're also trying to stop them from mm -hmm. uh, falling back into that same cycle. Yeah. Did uh, over the last couple of years, it's affected everybody, but did COVID yeah. affect Site B operations at all? It has. It's tremendously affected. We've had to do the social distancing. There were times where we weren't um, we were having to just kind of pass information. Site B showed up every day to work, and we worked with the inmates, but sometimes it would be through phone calls and phone systems um, based on what housing unit that they were assigned to, and we made sure we continued to deliver services. We've been challenged, but we show up and we we're there for up. them, and we work with the inmates for 90 days after they leave custody if they've participated in programs, and we provide that support even after they've transitioned into the community. Very so nice. We're and, there. and what is the what's the breakdown for male and female inmates? We we offer services for both. Correct, correct. So we have different training opportunities because we don't mix the populations inside of the jail, and we don't have enough staff or enough facility to duplicate every training for each gender, but we provide opportunities um, for various genders on and classifications, depending on what the needs are. We, uh, I, we, will, we don't uh, eliminate any classification. We'll provide inmate services to any classification within the jail. Very nice. So we, we highlighted a lot. You've, you've talked about the, the, the services that we have that we can train them in and things like that. Mm -hmm. Briefly, you mentioned just about our volunteers. We have a, we have a large group of volunteers that, that help make this possible yes, for you. Uh, one of the things that you mentioned was, was our, you know, we have, we have volunteers that come in from clergy mm -hmm. and try and reach them uh, spiritually, not yes. so much educationally, yeah like with the, with the training or anything like that, but mm -hmm. we're trying to reach them spiritually also yeah. uh, to maybe get them on the right path, help them. Yes, yes. Is, and that's at every jail? Yes, every single jail. Any, um, are we in need of volunteers? We are, we are. We would love more volunteers. We had quite a few fall away. We had to halt um, volunteer services during, you know, um, more of the surges within COVID. Our volunteer services are up and running right now so we are um, working with all of our volunteer groups but at times when the intensity within the population is is high we we don't want to expose anyone right uh, so, so for the public during the whole covid outbreak and and when it really got um, it, at its high points in, mm -hmm. in their cycles we were controlled by the state we yes. were told uh, you know bscc um the Bureau of State and Community Corrections mm -hmm. is what really regulates jails. Mm -hmm. And so they controlled whether or not we were allowing people in mm -hmm. to see them or the volunteers coming in. So a lot of those programs had to be shut off because yes. everyone was locked down. The, yes. I mean, our employees were isolated. Our inmates were isolated. Mm -hmm. you know, you've already briefly said that it really affected the way you – it's hard to teach. I yeah. mean, now we get a little political and throw it back, yeah. out, back out there. Um, it, it's – not only hard to teach an inmate, it's like, you know, for, for the people out there listening, imagine your kids. Mm -hmm. I mean, teleschool is not the same mm -hmm. as in-person school. Right. You, you don't have that personal interaction. You don't have that that face-to-face -face contact that, that we all thrive off yes. of. And that that distance was a, was a big barrier for, mm -hmm. for our inmates. And I even, I even heard from a lot of our volunteers that they would reach out to me wanting mm -hmm. to know when they were coming back because yeah. they were missing it because it yeah. was good for them too. Yeah. Uh, they, they get something out of, out of being able to help. That's true. The strongest, the, the best days are the days that you interact with, with the people that you're trying to help. 
It's it's it is the best days. It's the most rewarding time. I do. You mentioned the state board, and I do want to to brag on behalf of the sheriff's department. We were put under a strict audit and investment. Uh, that, that was nationally recognized as, as a type of um, evaluation of how we program at Site B uh, for the Sheriff's Department. This was a few years ago. And we were ranked on a national average in the top 7% of highly effective programs for working with incarcerated individuals. And so what that your, was in the country. That was what that was your bureau is is doing here with Site B is we definitely are being effective and we are um, hopefully making this county proud of what we offer to people that it is evidence based practice and it is absolutely targeted to help people. Absolutely. And and, and it's both sides of the coin when it comes to us. I mean, I, my my vision is to have us at the forefront of everything law enforcement mm-hmm. and whether that's how we patrol, how we interact with the community, uh, how how many people we arrest, and how we yeah. how we conduct ourselves with quality of life op- mm-hmm. operations and and dealing in the public. But when we when we get inmates into custody, we mm-hmm. don't just forget about them. And right. so I want to be known nationwide yeah. as one of the the best ways, the best places of how we're running things. And you've you've done a great job of of keeping us in that in that position. So Mm -hmm. it was a good award to get. It was a, it was a nice award to be recognized to say, look, we're trying to help them, not just incarcerate them. And that really comes down to you and your staff and, and the interaction and really the love that you have for your job and Mm -hmm. and trying to give back and make this, Mm -hmm. make corrections better. Yeah. People have an opportunity to change. We don't, we don't um, go on the side of, you know, what their crimes were or what you know their debt to society we just work with individuals and try to help build their skills and their opportunities that once they are released that they're productive members and that they're contributing and that their life is changed and those around them it's a positive yeah so one of the things you mentioned already but it's a little bit it's close to my heart just because um, of my time in corrections uh, speaking with with some of our um, you know, the people that run inmate Mm -hmm. food and um, meals and everything else and talking about things that they wish they did or things that we wished we could do. And the culinary program that we're Mm -hmm. starting is kind of a big deal. Yeah. I'm excited about that. Yes. Yes. It's talk a little bit about what the, the ultimate goals are of that. I mean, I mean, it, to me, it's, it's easy to say, well, I don't know if everyone knows, but we have inmates that prepare food for other inmates mm-hmm. and we have inmate workers that we call them and they're, they're food service workers that we have mm-hmm. uh, come in for the most part that are employees of the department. But then really a lot of the staff um, for, the, for preparing meals and mm-hmm. even clothing and things like that is involving inmate workers. Mm-hmm. So for this, for the culinary program, we're actually going to be expanding their knowledge base of just, mm-hmm. it's not just food to sustain you for the day right. we're going to teach them how to be chefs right. and how to be um you know possibly who knows we may we may f- may find the next big tv star or something and it yes. may come through our program well you never you never know but uh, at least hopefully people who can go out and work at nice restaurants and establishments and be able to prepare meals that they're proud of and that their signature meals this isn't institutional food that they're producing they are they are learning from chefs they are learning uh food preparation in different you know meal groups and areas and we have a huge um pastry kitchen uh set up where they'll also be learning to do all kinds of uh custom catering and things of that sort also so the opportunities uh, are going to be really great it is i'm excited about the the whole catering thing and the bakery and i we're going to be, I'm going to make sure we're known for that too. That sounds good. That's good. Or I know, I don't want to put you on the spot, That's but okay. you're, you've promised to work for a minimum of 10 more years, right? Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, we love what you're doing there. Thank we love you. everything that's, that's the, it really, the, I appreciate the love you have for what you're doing and the passion you have for, for helping and assisting with the inmates and, and making them productive members of society once they get out. So it wouldn't, it wouldn't be possible without 
you in that position. So well, we are all thankful for you. It wouldn't be possible without your support. And we thank you for that. Well, this is, you're this welcome. Is your, this is your bureau. And we, we appreciate the support and the opportunity to help partner with all of our intercounter agencies and to shine a light on Riverside and to help people change their lives. Perfect. Yeah. Maybe we'll have our own TV show. There you go. Perfect. Well, that concludes our episode for today. We're running out of time. Don, I want to thank you for joining us. Very much appreciated. And thank you all for joining us. And we will see you next time on the RSL Roundup.